So I was a Vim guy until about six months ago. And you guys have been hounding me for a couple of years. You need to check out Emacs. You need to really take a look at GNU Emacs. So I switched to Emacs about six months ago. Lived in GNU Emacs for about one month. I gave it 30 days. I learned the default GNU Emacs key bindings or key chords. And I realized very quickly that the standard GNU Emacs key bindings were very damaging to your hands. Long term, no one should use the standard Emacs key bindings. They're very dangerous. So I switched over to evil mode and I found a evil mode Emacs distribution called Doom Emacs. And I really fell in love with Doom Emacs. Been using Doom Emacs really the whole time I've been in Emacs other than those first 30 days where I tried to learn the default key bindings because I thought it was important for me to learn those default key bindings. But in the last month or so, I find myself more and more opening up Vim instead of Emacs. And I'm not exactly sure why that is. It's not like I no longer like Emacs. I still think Emacs is great. I think it's fantastic. But it's kind of like that 80s pop song. It must have been love, but it's over now. So I'm really trying to come to terms with exactly why I'm gravitating back to Vim after six months in Emacs. Because I found Evil Mode. Evil Mode solves a lot of problems. Once I found Evil Mode, and of course once I found Doom Emacs, you know, it really turned Emacs very much into a Vim-like experience. But there were some problems with that. For example, when you start using Evil Mode or a distribution like Space Max or Doom Emacs, you're going to have a problem with Emacs documentation, for example. Emacs documentation starts to become a real chore to follow because so much of the documentation assumes you're using the default GNU Emacs key bindings, which probably most Emacs users are not using the default GNU Emacs key bindings. They're probably using evil mode. And then these distributions like Space Max and Doom Emacs, you know, have their own custom key bindings also built into their particular Emacs distributions. It all feels a bit chaotic. You know, it's just, it, it's a bit of a mess. To be fair, some of this could be solved with better documentation from these particular Emacs distribution, Space Max, Doom Emacs, whatever it happens to be. But it's it's completely different with Vim, where you go and get Vim documentation, you know it's going to work because everybody's Vim is the same Vim. Emacs, when I open it up, it just seems chaotic. It really does. It seems a, a, a bit of a mess. When you have all of these extra packages that you have to add to Emacs, just to make it more Vim-like, which is what I was doing. So I'm adding all of this extra bloat to what is already an extremely bloated system that is Emacs. Is it worth it? One thing I can say with absolute certainty after spending a few months in Emacs, it is an undeniable fact that Emacs is more flexible than Vim. It just is. Emacs is built upon Lisp, Elisp, instead of VimScript. So Emacs really has support for greater possibilities because of that. Emacs can be so much more than Vim ever could be. And the fact that Emacs has Elisp and has built-in features or extra plugins that you can add, such as the eShell, org mode, EWW, which is the browser inside Emacs, ERC, which is the IRC client inside Emacs, EMMS, which is the multimedia player inside Emacs, Maggot, which is the Git client. And for me, the really killer feature, one of the things I absolutely love in Emacs is MU4E, which is the email client that is built into Emacs. It is probably the best email client I've ever used. Not even kidding. You guys that struggle with terminal-based email clients like NeoMutt and Alpine, those things are a chore to get up and working and to configure properly. They're kind of flaky pieces of software. They really are. MU4E, you can have that thing set up and working in minutes, and it just works. Works flawlessly. And having said all that, you know, <laughs> I still find myself back in Vim. And I'm at a bit of a loss to explain why, but there are a few things that come to mind, though. I think part of it is familiarity. You know, even though I'm pretty comfortable with Emacs and Evil Mode, Doom Emacs especially now, I'm 
feel very comfortable in it. I still feel more comfortable in Vim. I just do. Speed. Vim is faster than Emacs. It just is. Vim, everything is just lightning fast, responsive. Emacs is a bigger, more bloated, and quite frankly, a slower program than Vim. It just is. I, I, it's not perceived speed. I think it's just a fact. Vim is a faster program. Vim seems like a much more consistent program than Emacs, especially when you get into things like Space Max and Doom Emacs, because now you're having to learn two different sets of key bindings because you're really using a combination of the default GNU Emacs key bindings and then you're learning the new evil mode key bindings or in some cases you're learning specific key bindings to that distribution Space Max, Doom Emacs, whatever it happens to be. Vim you really only learn one set of key bindings. It's much more consistent across the board. The same thing with plugins. Plugins are much more consistent meaning that there are reoccurring themes in the way that these different plugins work where in Emacs you know you've got a million plugins that you can go install you're not really sure how they're going to work especially when you're dealing with things like evil mode so I'm using the Vim key bindings and everything but I install a particular plugin and it doesn't work with the Vim key bindings you know it's using some of the standard GNU Emacs key bindings or maybe it's using its own key bindings that the creator of that plugin made up now, the one thing I will say that does not matter whether you use Vim or Emacs, in my opinion, I don't think productivity is an issue at all, whether you use Emacs or Vim. I think you can be just as productive in Emacs as in Vim and vice versa. Switching from Vim to Emacs is not going to increase productivity. Switching from Emacs to Vim is not going to increase productivity. So if you're one of those people thinking of switching from one to the other, uh, that's fine. Don't think it's going to make you more productive, though. I, I, if it does, it would probably be so small of a difference, it's unnoticeable. Ultimately, I think part of my problem with Emacs and why I find myself in Vim more and more these days is the Unix philosophy. I'm a big fan of it, right? The Unix philosophy, for those that don't know, is do one thing, do one thing well. That's what a program should do. And that's exactly what Vim does. Vim is a text editor. That's all it is. And it's a fantastic text editor, the best out there. I think of myself, I view myself really as a command line user. You know, I do a lot of things at the command line. So for me, Vim is my text editor and it's great. I'm really reluctant to take on a whole bunch of additional complexity because all I want from my text editor is a text editor. I don't need all this other stuff that Emacs is bringing in. Emacs is a complete suite of applications. It's really more of an IDE than a text editor, but I already have an IDE as a command line user. My IDE is called the terminal. Think about that for a second. The terminal is my IDE. It gives me access to a browser, an email client, or IRC clients, Git clients, all the stuff that's built into Emacs I already have with all these terminal-based applications I was using anyway. And of course, the terminal gives me access to my favorite text editor, Vim. So do I really need Emacs? And I kind of prefer that workflow, that terminal-based workflow, the command line workflow, where I have a lot of these smaller, more modular tools in my terminal toolbox because it's comfortable for me. I feel comfortable in that world. The big feature bloated IDE that is Emacs, it's rather off-putting. It goes against everything I know as a Linux user. It really does. It's always kind of bothered me. The six months or so I've been using Emacs, all the heaviness and the bloatedness with it, I'm not going to lie. It has kind of annoyed me a little bit that I was living in that world instead of that more modular, use specific tools for specific tasks world that I lived in before Emacs. And I that, that's part of probably why I find myself in Vim more and more these days. Emacs, though, it's undeniably better than Vim in everything that's not directly related to actual text editing. Emacs is fantastic when it comes to all that other stuff besides text editing. It's, it's just amazing. But I don't really need any of that stuff that Emacs offers. Because really for me, I'm just looking for a simple text editor. Not a Lisp environment, you know, not 
four or five extra shells, <laughs> you know, the bash shell in my terminal this is the only shell I need. I don't need extra text-based browsers. I have links in my terminal. I don't need EWW. You know, I don't need ERC for the IRC client. I have ERC in my terminal. I, I, I don't need any of that extra stuff that comes with Emacs. I just need a text editor. And if I just need a text editor, Vim's already on the system. On Unix-based operating systems, you already have VI, and in most cases, Vim is already installed on the system. And I was already turning Emacs into Vim. And that's the thing. I've come to the realization that what I really wanted most out of Emacs is for it to be Vim. I was trying to make em Emacs into Vim. That's why I did Evil Mode. That's why I did Doom Emacs. To me, Vim is perfect. So I just wanted Emacs to be Vim. And now... You know, I'm not going to uninstall Emacs. Don't get this video twisted. Not uninstalling Emacs or Doom Emacs from my system. They're still going to be here. I may st still play around with them. I'm not even against making occasional content about Emacs. I'm, I don't know if I'll play with it that much to make more content about it. Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, I, I have been on it six months and I, I may still find myself wanting to launch Emacs every now and then. I don't know. I will say that part of the reason for me gravitating toward Vim, uh, you know, if I'm being honest with myself, it's that I'm a very basic person. I don't need all the bells and whistles. I don't need all the whiz bang features. You know, I typically my web browsers, you know, whatever web browser I happen to be using, Firefox or Brave or whatever it happens to be. I use web browsers typically without any plugins. I, I can use a web browser without any plugin installed and live happily in it for months, if not years. Text editors, extensible text editors like Vim and Emacs. The same thing. If you looked at my Vim RC, there's nothing to it. I barely play around with, with my Vim RC. Not many uh, plugins installed at all. I don't sit around and configure my Vim RC. It's not one of these 2,000 line Vim RCs. You know, I barely touch the thing. Why? It's because typically I'm one of those people, you present me with something, I take it as is. And part of the thing is I, I have eventually realized this configuration. It's not necessarily a positive thing when it comes to software. Now, don't get that twisted. I, I like being able to configure things. I like being able to make something exactly the way I want it. But configuration is only a positive if it's available to you, but it's not necessary. Like if I have to spend hours, if or maybe in some cases weeks or months, configuring something to make it functional to give it like basic functionality which is kind of what you have to do in Emacs that's not a positive that's a negative if you feel the need to customize a piece of software or you feel like you have to customize it you have to install these plugins because if you don't it's simply unusable that's a sign something is wrong with that piece of software why doesn't it do those things you want especially if it's just basic stuff why doesn't it do those reasonable things you expect it to do without all of that customization and installing all these bloated plugins. Now, some people will say, well, I just didn't give it enough time. You didn't spend enough time in Emacs to really give it a shot. It's six months, guys, right? If after six months of use, I'm still finding myself wanting to launch Vim instead of Emacs, and, and I gave Emacs a real shot. Like, I spent all of my time exclusively in Emacs for a few months, if I still want to launch Vim instead of Emacs, I think it's safe to say that Vim is the text editor for me. And that's, again, quote, for me, for me, not for everyone, not for you, for me. Ultimately, you got to choose the tools that work right for you. I, I don't regret trying Emacs. I, I'm really glad I did this. It's been worthwhile. It's been a great experience. And there are some things that Emacs does that honestly, I might incorporate in my Vim workflow. Seriously, I might install some Vim plugins to try to emulate some of what Emacs does. So I certainly would recommend everyone, if you're interested in trying either Vim or Emacs, try them both if you can. Maybe you'll like one more than the other. Maybe neither one of them will work for you. That's fine too. There's other text editors out there for me. You know, I found the one that works for me. I got to be honest, I just really love Vim. And the whole time I was in Emacs, you know, it was like one of those other songs, you know, <laughs> you can't be with the one you love, Vim, then love the one you're with. And that's kind of what I, I was loving Emacs because it was the one I was with. But uh, yeah, I wanted to get back to Vim. Now, before I go, 
I need to thank a few special people. This show was produced by Michael, Mitchell, Chris, DJ Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Lambda, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of this show. Without these guys, this episode wouldn't have been possible. Also need to thank all these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. Without each and every one of these, ladies and gentlemen, the channel wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my work, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.